it is difficult to tell the difference between ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. So remember, both are sort of wide complex tachycardias, or they can be wide complex tachycardias. Um, VTAC, at least its monomorphic form, tends to be more regular. Ventricular fibrillation is more of this like jumbled mess where there isn't a clear pattern to it. It's this undulating. You notice how everything sort of looks different. Um, we put these two strips up to just compare and contrast. From a management standpoint, of course, you know, if you have pulseless VTAC, or VFib, you're going down the ACLS pathway. Um, and so from that perspective, it's not that different. Of course, if the patient is more stable, then you enter a whole different realm of ventricular tachycardia management. Uh, do you have any, any other tips to tell the difference between the two? I think that one thing that always stood out to me is that if we look at the VTAC appearance, it often has a description as looking like shark teeth and shark teeth mm -hmm. are very sharp, generally speaking, and pretty regular essentially. And so if you imagine looking into Jaws's mouth, you can kind of see that top picture as kind of a shark tooth appearance. One student in the chat had asked, uh, is it uh, likely that VTAC always looks the same or always looks like that? And the answer is kind of. You can tell that there's a difference between this, the appearance of the previous slide and this one slightly, but the overall gist of a monomorphic, wide, complex, big, sharp appearance to the QRS complexes that's usually very fast, so ventricular, wide, complex, tachycardia, fast, uh, is going to be usually what we see there. So there is usually a fairly clear appearance of VTAC, where it almost always looks something like what we have in that top image there. VFib, on the other hand, anybody's guess. Uh, it's all over the place. It's going to be super jumbled, sometimes just a little tiny squiggly line, but very frequently it doesn't have a monomorphic appearance. It is not going to be uniform throughout. You can see that there's variations that are happening all throughout that bottom image there for VFib. You know, one of the ways that I think about this is to sort of correlate it with things that I am more comfortable with in the atria, right? So the way I imagine uh, ventricular fibrillation is if you took that undulating bag of worms baseline in the atria, it sort of looks like a blown up version of that in the ventricles. And just as in the chat, it was mentioned in a flutter, you see the sawtooth, you just, it's using the same sort of mental imagery where you see more of that sawtooth appearance, but in the ventricles. And it sort of alludes to the underlying pathophysiology a little bit, quivering atria, quivering ventricles, you know, in monomorphic VT at least, patterns of aberrant electrical activity whirling around either in the atria around a particular anatomic structure or in the ventricles around a scar or something else that's predisposing to VTAC. Excellent point, uh, Moses, about the shape of these guys, if we have a re rhythm, if we have electricity, it's like chasing its own tail. We usually have like very clear, sharp lines. VTAC and A flutter are gonna be very clear in terms of their up down motion as all the electricity moves in a synchronous fashion, just way too fast in a circle that we can't control. Whereas if we're looking at VFib or AFib, electricity is basically just kind of randomly going through the ventricle or the atrium, creating a very messy, undulating, uh, uncoordinated baseline there. So you're correct, absolutely. I, I like that description a lot. The VFib looks like uh, AFib, just big and without QRS complexes that are very clear.